Hello and welcome to Miniature Painting with the Jolly Good Giant. I'm your host, the Jolly Good Giant. Today's video is brought to you today by Miller's Community Media, Plaid Crafts, and TJ's Cafe and Games in Mil Milford, Massachusetts. Today I'm going to be painting up two nightmares and a gelatinous cube. All of these figures are made by WizKids. They're Dungeons and Dragons figures and they're translucent. I'm going to paint them in a way that will allow them to keep the transparency but still add color to them. I'm going to be using uh, what I call the tinted sealer technique. Uh, to make tinted sealer paints, uh, you need Folk Art Ultra Dye, Mod Podge Gloss, and Mod Podge Ultra Gloss. I mix two parts of the Ultra Dye in, one part of the Mod Podge, and one part of the Mod Podge Ultra. And I uh, mix them up and then I paint away. I would like to point out um, some people in their miniature painting videos neglect to mention it's very important to uh, wash your miniatures with soap and water before you paint them and dry them thoroughly. It removes any um, mold releasing agent um, so when they're separated from their molds and it makes it easier to paint them for the paint to adhere. So I'm going to start out with painting the gelatinous cube. And for this, I'm going to use Venom. Oh, I'm also using a 5-round brush and a 10-0 liner brush. I'm going to be using the Venom Ultra Dye mixed with the, the two types of Mod Podge. And I'm going to go over the gelatinous cube. If you wanted to use a larger brush for this, that would be fine. This figure is actually one of the few that you don't really mind if it pools a little bit because it's a big slimy cube, right? Like in the movie Onward. So I'm actually going to apply this fairly generously. It's gen I, for the most part, you'd want to do thin coats with this. It's going to take three or four thin coats for the color to really uh, show through. But I'm going to put on a little bit thick here because I have three other figures to paint and we should have time to dry before I need to add another coat. With the gelatinous cube, oh, so you have the outside shell and then you have the inside stomach acid with the dissolving heroes and weapons. Um, if you wanted to, you could take other little pieces of uh, weaponry or uh, skulls, bones, whatever, and glue them up inside of here because there's plenty of room inside of there to add more um, accents. One of the coolest things about using tinted sealers is that it's a sealer already so once you're done painting you don't need to seal it. I will say it's very important when you're using tinted sealers though to also um, use some sort of a protective mat because once this stuff dries you're not going to get it off of anything. At least that's been my experience without a hammer and a chisel. So I went around that with one coat. Like I said, I did apply it a little heavier than I normally would have. But it should dry still fairly quickly. It's pretty warm in here today. I have three other things to paint. So I'm going to close my uh, Venom. Venom green. Into my brush. Next figure I'm going to do is one of these nightmares. And I'm going to use the Emerald City green. I'm going to make a green nightmare, a green fire horse. Um, my plan was to make another, just to do one up like the uh, horse from uh, the water spirit from Frozen 2, but I, silly me, forgot the turquoise and the blue. So we're going to make a green fire horse. In case you can't tell, green is my favorite color. So. If you've seen, ever seen my green fire phoenix. You might suspect that already. Make sure you get both sides, all, get it all the way around when you're uh, painting it because it really enhances the effect. 
the way the light goes through it when you're done. I say that, but this is actually the first green uh, nightmare I've done, so hopefully it'll come out as cool as I think it will. Yep, I blew on it. Okay, I'm gonna let, give that a minute to dry. And close up the Emerald City. Change my brush. I'm going to move on to the gut insert for the gelatinous cube. I don't know if you can see on the camera. It's got a bunch of uh, skeletons in there and some weapons and uh, a shield. I'm going to try to avoid the skeletons. Those are actually primed, so they should they'll take this pretty well. But I'm going to avoid those. I'm going to use. Um, Hot flash is the, what this color is called. It's almost like a magenta-ish red. And uh, a tip that my friend Todd pointed out to me in using this, painting this particular part, is if you uh, paint the inside first, really helps. Again, helps the color around the skeletons because the skeletons are already primed white. So you could just leave them white, but you can see them. A lot better you uh, make sure you get the uh, the clear guts or stomach acid behind the skeleton makes the skeletons pop a little more and for all of these I've been using the five the round five brush comes in the 10 pack of either the uh, the plaid mod podge brushes detail brushes or the premium detail brushes which have the black handle again thin thin coats are actually probably the better way to go to avoid running and pooling definitely if you're painting something that you want to be very like the nightmares you probably don't want pooling on them if you're doing, if you're painting one of them to be the frozen, uh, the the water spirit from Frozen Two, then a little bit of pooling wouldn't be bad because it, you would just assume that it's a liquid uh, spirit monster sort of thing. So one around, all around the inside, and I can see that I didn't uh, miss any spots. So now I'm going to paint the outside. Careful to avoid the skeletons. If anyone out there watching this video is interested in joining either my youth and family painting group or my adult painting group, you can email me at jollygoodgiant at gmail.com. Jollygoodgiant is all one word. And uh, we've been meeting on Zoom, Zoom calls every other week. So for some of these uh, internal... Um, stomach acid parts here where the skeletons are kind of overlapping. It might be better to use the, uh, the smaller detail brush, but I'm really going to, the liner brush, I'm really just going to use that for the, um, some of the flames and eyes and things on the nightmares. But wouldn't hurt to use in this situation either. If anyone watching this video has any interest in um, taking a basic painters class, I will be teaching workshops at uh, TJ's Cafe and Games in Milford, Mass. I believe starting in November.
So feel free to reach out to them or again to me at jollygoodgiant at gmail.com. I'll let that dry. Fix my brush. Check the tackiness on my gelatinous cube. It would have been a little better if I went a little thinner. I can I can definitely tell because it would it should have been dry already. That's all right. So now I'm going to move on to my last nightmare. I'm going to move these around a little bit. This one I'm going to start out with. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's little streaks where there's tears almost in its outer skin where flames would be sh throwing, showing through. And I'm going to go over and do a couple of layers on those with the um, solar power. There's also an orange that uh, I can't think of the name of right now that I didn't bring with me that could also be used. Uh, but solar power is pretty dark, especially after two or three coats. So using my 10-0 liner brush, I'm going to go, go over those spots with solar power. I'm also going to do the mouth. It's hard to see the detail in the clear figure right away, but once I get the two or three different shades of uh, tinted sealer on there, you'll be able to see some of the detail a little bit better. I'm also going to, going to um, touch up the... Uh, the flames on the back of the legs. This figure is really great. There's a lot of things you could do with it. If you're a Pokemon fan, you could paint one of these up to be like a ponyta, or uh, even if you added a little, added a unicorn horn or some sort of a horn there on the top, you could make it a Rapidash. Um, again, I, I've made some to look like the the Frozen Two Water Spirit. I'm gonna make a green fire horse you can make a, a regular fire horse you, it's, it's a really really cool and versatile figure so many things you can do with it just for make just by making it clear and uh, making it a flaming horse I'm gonna completely completely cover the uh, the tail in solar power I'm going to touch up afterward with um, Pucker Up, which is the, the brighter yellow. I might even dry brush a little bit of um, the purple rain over the edges of it. I'm also going to do the mane in this color. At least one coat. Even just one coat seems to be uh, going on fairly dark, as you can tell from the camera there, on the camera there. Kind of a small figure. So. And I'm actually going to put um, on either side of the front shoulders on the horse here, uh, the shoulders. Just kind of a, in that general area, I'm just going to kind of glob some on there because I'm going to go over that again later with the purple rain. And if I hold it up to the light, I'll be able to see that yellow, the uh, solar power underneath the purple. And it'll give it the appearance of having flame inside if it's uh, 
body cavity. It's actually kind of a cool effect, which I found by accident, but uh, I was happy with. Where's a little hair dryer when you need one, right? All right, I'm gonna let that dry. Rinse my little brush here. Get all the Mod Podge off it. The gelatinous cube is mostly dry. It's a little bit tacky, but I'm gonna go over it with another coat of the Venom. Using the brown five brush. It's a little bit thinner this time. But I'm definitely going to use the uh, sealer to wash away any fingerprints that I got on there just now by picking it up. Because it was still a little tacky. Because I put the first coat on so thick. I know I had said with the guts to paint the inside of the, uh, the clear part. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it with this unless you have a special brush that's bent at an angle that you can get in there with. I mean it might really add some more color to it but then just a couple of coats on the outside really make a difference in the clear. I don't know if you can tell from the video but in person I think it's a pretty drastic change just from two coats. Again, I did do these coats a little bit thicker than I would do, say, on a Nightmare. But because it's a gelatinous cube, and it's supposed to be slimy and wet, I think it'll work just fine. It's another reason I'm using gloss. If you didn't want, if you wanted to do this and not have a uh, shiny figure you would use the matte on both of those or a combination of the matte and the gloss from either from one type of Mod Podge or the other. that dry. You remember I did the coat on the first nightmare a little thinner and that is mostly dry. It doesn't feel tacky really. So I'm going to go over and do another coat on that and then I'm going to on the next coat after that I'm going to go over it with a little bit of the venom green and then a little bit of the two yellows that I have. I'll do a light, light quick coat. Just to add a little more green to a few spots. I'm actually going to put a little bit on the uh, the mane and the tail as well, because I can I think I can still lighten them up pretty good with the uh, with the venom and the uh, solar power. This building needs to blow on it. I don't know what to tell you. Actually, since uh, I'm going to wait for the green to dry on that, I'm going to go over the parts that I didn't really paint with the venom, the tail, and the mane, and the uh, fire around the ankles there, around the hooves and ankles. I'll go over that with venom to lighten them up a little bit. I 
making sure that I get both sides of the mane and both sides of the tail and the underside of the tail. I'll let that dry. I'm actually going to apply another coat of the uh, pucker up to the inside and outside of the guts here. Just a little bit. Clear up any um, spots where it thinned out. Not, not clear it up to uh, reinforce, I guess. More solid color. Still letting it maintain that sort of liquidy look. So now I'm actually, I'm going to try something a little new here. I'm going to add a little bit of the uh, purple rain. Just a little bit of purple rain on the outside of the guts there. To give it a little bit of a different look. It's not all just one color. Not the easiest color to uh, type of paint to paint a dry brush with. But I'm liking the effect. Not completely covering it, so I'm leaving some of the hot flash to shine through. But I feel like adding a little bit of the uh, purple rain, giving it different, uh, giving it the illusion of different depths or so, or so in the uh, stomach acid. I don't know if you, again, I keep saying, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I can see the difference here in person, and, and I like the way it looks. I'm going to let that dry. I'll go back to my, uh, my last nightmare there. I'll add a little more solar power to it, on the tail and mane anyway. Just around the hooves. Hoof flames. Just to make the color a little richer. More present. Some people might be like, well, why are you using see through paint or transparent paint, tinted sealer? Uh, because it's supposed to be a nightmare. It's supposed to be a type of a spirit horse or a ethereal, I believe the word is, ethereal monster. I don't actually play D&D, &D, so don't hold that against me. I just like painting the monsters. And that's another reason you use a mat, so you don't get paint on the table. And uh, I didn't mess up my figure, so that's good too. So my gelatinous cube is mostly done. I think it's dark enough, but I am going to put a little bit of Emerald City. I'm going to try to dry brush a little bit of that in a few spots and see how that looks. And then after that, I will try to use a little bit of the uh, pucker up, the brighter yellow, in a few spots as well. So in some of these ooze points, I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, Emerald City. I'll be honest, I'm not sure I like the way it's looking. So I'm just going gonna, gonna to go over it lightly. I'm going to go over the whole thing lightly with a coat of it. I'm going to do it that way. I know just painting it solid venom works. I'm just trying to be a little uh, creative right now. And I actually kind of like the way that looks too. 
So I'm going to do the whole cube and see how it comes out. the way that looks better than just plain uh, venom. Venom, a couple of coats of venom with a little bit of light emerald city over the top of it. Again, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it, and I really like the way it looks. Just gotta get the top of it now. Oh yeah, I, I really, I really like that. The way white's going through it. It's like there's different layers of uh, gel. Definitely a fan of that. All right, I'm gonna my green nightmare, green fire nightmare is dried up a little bit, dry enough that I'm gonna. Over him again with some Emerald City to make him darker. If you'd like to see examples of other miniatures I painted, you can look them up on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube under Jollica Giant. And unfortunately, some of those uh, have spaces and some of them don't. So. And off the top of my head, I want to say YouTube is Jolly Good Giant, all one word. Uh, Facebook is Facebook and Instagram is Jolly Good Giant. There's spaces in between each word. Well, I don't know. Looks more like a lime Kool Aid horse than a fire horse. Looks like you get fused and gloss. <clears throat> both glosses instead of using a mat, but it's all right. It's still kind of cool. Now, if you do do something like this and it comes out really glossy and you said it's too glossy, you can actually go over it again later with a matte sealer or a matte mod, mod podge and um, that'll tone it down uh, quite a bit. I'm going to use, I was just going to use um, Purple Rain, excuse me, on the other um, Nightmare, but I'm going to use a little bit of uh, Hot Flash on here as an undercoat, and I'll go over it with Purple Rain, just in the front and mid sections of the, the Nightmare. Little boo boo. Clear that up real quick. One of the coolest things about miniature painting is if you make a mistake, as long as you don't tell anyone, nobody really knows. Because uh, you're painting it how you see it in your head. All right. Whatever. I'm not gonna blow on it all night. So I'm gonna let that dry. Actually, let the front part dry. I'm gonna go over the back part of it with uh, purple rain real quick. And I'll do some touch up parts on the uh, stomach part of the gelatinous cube. I'll probably put it, just pop it together because I'm done with the outside. And I think I'm done with the inside except for the skeletons and the weapons. Which I'm gonna use gunmetal gray for. So you wanna make sure you get. Tinted sealer on all of the exposed surfaces. Unless you want that more uh, clear look at, at some part of it, but I just feel like having the color all the way around really helps with the effect. Uh, 
on a different gelatinous cube that I did, I actually painted the skeletons, but on this one I think I'm just going to leave them. And I am going to use metallic gunmetal gray to paint the shields, uh, weapons that are in here. Not like you're really going to be able to notice it if it's inside of the gelatinous cube, but. Then maybe you will. I don't know. Did I forgot to do something? Usually when I uh, use any of the paints, I add a little bit of uh, Mod Podge Ultra to them. Just get some drops to the little bit that I'm using. It just helps the paint uh, run a little bit smoother. Somebody might be saying, why is he painting them a silvery metallic color? Wouldn't the gelatinous cube turn them to rust and melt them? The way I see it, he's eating each outer layer away with the stomach acid, or it rather, and that's uh, making them all very shiny. He's eating all the, any dirt or blood or gore off of the swords, off the shield, so it wouldn't turn to rust. It, it would still dissolve, but it would... Uh, make it cleaner and shinier, I would think. So then maybe that's part of its uh, appeal in the game. Maybe it, uh, that glint makes people think there's treasure down the corridor. Who knows? I don't know. Again, I don't play D&D. &D. So, yeah, one of the weapons. It's got metal gray. I want that dry. It'll take a little bit longer than it took the... Uh, but... It's a little tacky soap. I'm gonna just put that right on there. This gelatinous cube with uh, stomach acid dissolving its victims. Now I'm gonna do uh, a little bit of this uh, solar power on the green fire horse, fire nightmare. The mane, maybe a little around the mouth. And I can go, like, well, why is he doing it this way on this one when he put the yellow down first on the other one? I'm going to show you the difference. Might mess this one up a little bit, but it's my way of showing you that it's. It's better to put the lighter colors down first on clear figures when you're using transparent uh, paint or uh, tinted sealer, uh, which is opposite of what you would do if you were painting with solid colors. So you'd put the darker colors down first and then dry brush lighter colors over it. But, I mean, the lighter colors do affect it, affect it even in this, but not as much as as if you put them down first. I don't know if you can really tell on the camera, but I can tell by looking at them that the, the, the yellows show up better on the purple nightmare because I put those down first than they do on the green nightmare. I mean, right now I'm just looking at the mouth. You probably can't even tell that there's yellow on the mouth. I can barely tell. So, um, so definitely, with uh, tinted sealers, put the lighter colors on first on the transparent figures. And uh, they'll shine through under the darker colors. But it doesn't work so well the other way around. same color moving right on to the nightmare the uh, purple nightmare Just touch up any spots on the mane and then the mouth I might have missed and then the flame 
these around the ankles. So they're all looking pretty good to me. I apologize if I mumbled in any part of this video. I need to work on speaking a little more clearly. You may not be able to tell, but I'm pretty jolly right now, okay? Just kind of a relaxing hobby, you know, so, but I'm jolly. You want to make sure you get all the Mod Podge off of your brushes, because uh, it'll definitely wreck the brush if you don't get it all off before it dries. Okay, I'm going to do a little more uh, purple rain here on this. So uh, even though I'm going over the um, the hot flash with the purple rain, you should still be able to see the subtle difference when you hold it up to the light or if it's there's a light source near it. These are great paints for uh, clear figures, this tinted sealer. Um, Wizkids Kids makes a few. Um, clear figures and Reaper miniatures makes them as well. I'm sure other manufacturers probably makes them as well. I've noticed that with the uh, darker uh, Reaper miniature figures, uh, like the medium fire elemental and uh, darker figures like that, this type of paint, the tinted sealer, doesn't really work very well. And uh, I would expect you'd have to apply m multiple, multiple coatings to get a slight color change. So. But it might work well with, say, uh, Air Elemental or Water Elemental. Or even some of the newer uh, Spectral figures that are like a light blue. Just uh, the darker, like I said, the darker, brighter figures like uh, Fire Elementals, it, it doesn't work so great on. So I, and, uh, I am going to be doing a video for Plat FX Con. Um, next month and I will be hopefully have a large earth elemental from Reaper miniatures that I use a uh, color shift base coat on that I apply some uh, tinted sealer to to give it a crystal gem effect I haven't actually tried it out yet but it looks right in my head so we'll see how it looks in person when I'm done if you don't get the color completely solid on there, don't worry about it because it's, it's supposed to be like a spirit, ethereal, ethereal, obviously that type of figure, so, you know, phantomish. So I'm, I'm calling that one done, except for the base. I have to do the base. I'll probably just use gunmetal gray on the base, but I like it. And this one, I'm going to add a, another layer of Emerald City, actually. And then I'll probably call that one done as well. I know I'm applying the brightest, lightest color I have right now at the very end, which goes completely goes against what I had said to do. But that's how I did this whole figure, so I might as well uh, finish strong, as they say. Should have given yellow eyes, too. It's probably not going to work. Probably not going to work. Ooh, this can be my Mountain Dew horse. There we go. Try not to laugh, Larry. I know you want to. Sorry, folks. I talked to the cameraman. Apparently, that's not allowed. But I figure it's my video, so it's okay. Um, yeah. Let me just do this quick. I, mean, I suppose it could leave in gray, but I just feel like the uh, gunmetal gray will look better. They're supposed to be spirit horses, give them more of an ethereal effect. You know, I'm going to look that word up after this, too, just to make sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. I think it's ethereal.
wasn't blowing on it to dry it, I was blowing on it to make sure that nothing was pooling. It's an interesting base. Oftentimes, I will also say uh, lots of uh, these WizKid figures come with clear parts that you can pull right off, um, like clear wings and um, sometimes crystals and things on some of the earth golems. You can just pull the parts right off, magic spells, paint them like this, paint the other figure, then glue them back together. And maybe I'll do one of those uh, on one of my pages soon and you can take a look. So, you have Classic Nightmare, Green Fire Nightmare, Gelatinous Cube that pops apart into two parts. I would again like to thank Mills Community Media, Plaid Craft, and TJ's Cafe and Games for their support. Thank you.